All right, everyone, we're back. Make sure you check in. Come on, guys, you gotta be faster than this. There's only uh, nine people checked in so far. All right, 11, almost. We're missing Brenda, Lewis, you didn't check in yet, Poliana, and Steph is not here. Okay. Come on, camera's on. Make sure you check in. What's happening, Lewis, you girls? All right, Brandon's done. Missing Lewis and Pollyanna still. All right. And I guess we keep missing Lewis. All right. All right, Lisa's back on YouTube. And a couple more people. All right, so this is part two, uh, title transfer. We're going to talk about involuntary title transfer. Guys, make sure you're sitting down, paying attention, not talking to other people. Thank you very much. Let's focus on this. So involuntary. What does involuntary mean? It means you're being forced to do something. Okay. Title transfer means it's transferring from you to somebody else. Right, so the deed, right? And it could be in different ways. You could lose the property by descent, laws of descent. Um, we finished the chapter, the part one, we finished talking about laws of descent. Why would you lose your property involuntarily because of the laws of descent? Who knows? Ron, do you know? Sebastian, you died intestate, correct. So you died intestate without a will, right? So you could lose your property or it could be transferred by laws of descent, right? And who gets it? Hey, Ruth, what's up? So who gets it if it's uh, laws of descent, intestate? At the end? The state. The state gets it. So laws of descent, the property is transferred either to your heirs in a way that you did not determine or to the state. Laws of descent. It could be based on abandonment. So you're abandoning the claim to the property. It could be based on foreclosure. Nobody asked for it. It could be eminent domain. The government needs your property for public good. It could also be adverse possession. That means somebody 
uh, got into your property, used the property for a certain amount of time, and then had the right to claim the property. And then there's that word again, estoppel, right? Again, stop. That's what it is. Estoppel, stop. Okay. But we'll, we'll get to it in a sec. Laws of descent, the, of descent, we just covered this. It's involuntary alienation that occurs when the title holder dies without a will. What does this word mean? Alienation. Transfer of title. Exactly. Alienation, transfer of title. Sebastian, yes. Somebody in, in Florida, and all over, but there's somebody in Florida, a 24-year-old kid, um, kid uh, adult, 24-year-old <laughs> adult that um, got a $3.2 million mansion in Florida, but then decided to party too much, and he got kicked out of the house that he almost got. It was like a year or a year and a half away from completing that uh, process. But anyway, so alienation is transfer. Very good. So laws of descent, involuntary transfer when you die without a will. Okay. Abandonment. The property has been ad abandoned for a statutory period of time and may also cheat to the state or the county. So one of the things you guys will realize when it's abandoned properties, and you guys can drive around, if you see abandoned properties, two things are happening. One of them is um, the person left because they didn't pay the bill or uh, whatever, or somebody died. So two things are happening. One of them is that they left because died or did not pay bills. The other thing that could be happening is the government already seized the property for violations because being abandoned, it needs to be um, winterized. It needs to be sealed so people don't... Uh, uh, don't break and, and enter and, and you have homeless people sometimes living there and could cause fires because they don't have utilities or whatever so the, this is what's happening to abandoned homes so if you abandon it the government could take the property okay other type of abandonment where somebody could take the property is the adverse possession that we just talked about so these are two types of abandonment foreclosure you fail to pay simple as that you fail to pay the bills and they came and got your property. It could be a tax foreclosure. It could be a mechanics lien foreclosure. It could be a mortgage lien foreclosure. Foreclosure just means unpaid bill. So you did not pay a loan or taxes. You have unpaid bills. Okay? And then eminent domain, we already covered, but it's here highlighted again. Eminent domain, government needs your property for some reason. So they can come and get uh, the property. Simple. Now, obviously, they have to give you some type of payments. They have to compensate you somehow. They'll give you a fair compensation. But they cannot take it because of whatever reason. It has to be for public good. It has to benefit the whole community. Go ahead. Quick, quick, run. Faster, Lewis. Faster. Faster. All right, um, Josh, they can foreclose on your home, but they can eject you if you have children or evic ejectment and evic eviction is two different things. Uh, same purpose, but yes, two different things. But you're saying that they can foreclose on your home, but they can't evict you if you have children. That depends. Okay, that depends on state law. Uh, so state of New Jersey, for instance, you cannot get kicked out regardless of having children or not. If there's a foreclosure, the new owner that won the foreclosure has to honor your current lease. As long as you're paying, you're a paying tenant. You're a legal tenant. They cannot kick you out, right? If you're not paying, then it's a tenancy at uh, a sufferance. Like you're there at sufferance. So the landlord can kick you out. Now, since you men mentioned children, there will be some protection, some appeals, depending on each state is different, but some appeals that you can place to stay longer. But state of New Jersey, six months. So can you get evicted if you have children? Yes. Yeah, but you have a, a six month, up to six month protection. You don't have six months, you have up to six month protection, right? And usually those will come in at the time, uh, winter time, for instance, because it's difficult to get another, another place, carry around your children uh, in the middle of winter, right? Uh, get another job, get whatever it might be. Sorry, we're having training next door, so they decided to clap 
really loud. Let's clap back. We just clap back. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> uh, the next one we have is adverse possession. Now, to be more clear about ad adverse possession, I did explain you have to be able to show a claim of right or color of title as a reason for the possession, for adverse possession, right? You have to have notorious possession. That means people have to see it. You cannot be uh, hidden in the basement. I mentioned this yesterday. And you have to maintain a constant or consistent use of the property. Um, as it says here, um, regardless of the owner claims or uh, consent. And occupy the property continuously for a statutory period of time. So if your state is six years, you have to be there continuously for six years. You or somebody else. Because we can transfer uh, that right to somebody else. And then, this is the key that I mentioned yesterday, and we got it here. In some states, you have to pay taxes. Not all. Okay? Some states and some countries really don't care if you pay taxes or not. If you're using the property, you have the right to the property, and then we'll figure everything else later. Okay? Uh, Sebastian, yes. Now, what is the difference between the claim um, of right or color of title? So claim of right is the easement. We talked about it uh, where I've been using it for 30 years, let's say, or for six years or for 15 years, whatever the statutory rights are. And I've been using it so I have the right to claim the property, statutory rights. The color of title, color of title, and I know they have these crazy things in law, color of title, simply means that I sold the property to you, but there was an issue with the title. Okay, just because you correct the title doesn't mean that now I lose the owner, the ownership. Remember how we started the previous, uh, the, uh, this chapter, so the previous session, right? We talked about three people, right, that purchased the same property. One purchased first, the other one paid the most, and the third one got the deed to the property, right? So color of title results when the the grantee, the buyer, has obtained a defective title or received a title with, by defective means, just like in that case earlier, but occupies the property. So if I've lived there, remember number one, lived there for six months before it was transferred to somebody else or sold to somebody else. If I live there, I occupy, I have what's called color of title. I have possession, nine-tenths of the law. Remember I said that? Right? I purchased it i paid for it i've been living in it therefore it's mine right and that's that will be my claim in court so it's a little different than adverse possession because i paid for it right but it's the, the fact that i'm occupying and using it that gives me that right okay it has to be notorious possession and hostile possession um and it will give constructive notice to the public because notorious Right? Nostorious, that means that everybody can see it. I'm not hiding it. Hostile means it's without the owner's co consent. It's a hostile takeover. The fact that I'm there and I'm using it and everybody can see it gives a constructive notice to the general public of what I'm doing. What is constructive notice again? You guys should know by now. Constructive notice. Say louder. information is available so yes availability of information you see that i'm here i'm taking over this space right you see that i'm here whether the owner claims it or not that's a different story but i'm here i'm not hiding it the owner has the right to claim it and kick me out if they don't i'm not hiding it okay so that is key for adverse possession okay in some states, you must pay taxes and so on. All right? How do we avoid? You have a question? Go ahead. Hold, hold, hold on a second. The question is started with: if somebody tries to steal somebody else's house. Uh, so, in this case, in this case. We're legally stealing a house, so it's legal. 
Okay, so there's the legal way, there's the legal way. Go ahead, continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was going to tell you right now, how to avoid adverse possession. That's what we're going to go over. How can you stop it? How can you avoid it, right? But before that, I'm going to answer a question that just came up on YouTube, and some of you probably thinking the same thing which is, Lisa says, how does this help me sell a home? Great question. How does knowing this stuff help you sell a home? Unfortunately, as realtors or salespeople, we need to know about the general rules and laws of uh, real estate. One of the things we need to know because we're talking about transfer of title is knowing if the person that's occupying the property has the right to be there or not. The person attempting to sell the property has the right to seller or not and also let's say lisa that you're selling the property next door right and the next door neighbor right has been using part of your land for the past three years right depending on the state you're in maybe three years is enough to claim the property so now you're selling the house lisa to somebody else minus the usage of the neighbor so let's say this right here These are the two properties, okay? Lisa, you're selling property A, right? Not property B. But property B installed their fence, remember that? What Stephen did to the neighbor, right? So installed their fence a foot or two feet in to the property. So now they're encroaching into the property. We said this yesterday, encroachment, they're encroaching into the property. Lisa, after 20 years or 30 years or 6 years or 15 years, whatever the statutory period of time is, B can actually claim this piece of land. So if you're trying to help A sell the property, you're not selling the whole lot. The only thing you can sell is this part, the, the part that's available, the empty part. Because A just lost, right? They just lost right there the, um, the fence uh, space. You got it? So one of the things we have to do is always have our eyes and ears open. Meaning, eyes, we need to pay attention to the current structure. If, it's, if you see, wait a minute, these are exactly the same, but why is the fence here? Or we look at tax records. Tax record says this is a 25 by 100, and I'm looking at both of them. How is it 25 by 100? The fence is here. Something is off. You guys understand? But yes, it is our job to have the general knowledge. Beyond that point, a surveyor will correct or attempt to correct the issue by doing a proper survey. From there on, you can go to uh, call the cops or court uh, to, to take action. All right. So how do we avoid? Lisa, let me know if you got it. Uh, so how do we avoid adverse possession? How does Lady Anne stop somebody from taking over the property, right? That was your question? All right. You knock Steven's fence down. Take it. <laughs> no. You cannot take matters into your own hands. You have to go through a proper process. So if somebody's trespassing, obviously you can call the cops if they're trespassing. If it's a, le a, a legal dispute uh, on the property, Right now, you got to have make a complaint with city, for instance, right? Or take them to court. That's the only thing you can do. You can you cannot get get there and start destroying Stephen's uh, fence. Okay? The best thing is call a lawyer first. Yes, real estate lawyer, preferably. Okay, and I'm saying this because it's also very important. Like uh, I, I give you this example always. Like, we all have a family doctor, right? The one we go to, the general doctor, right? The primary doctor, right? But then there's specialists, right? You want to have an attorney that's focused on real estate and they know how to deal with these things. You don't want to have the, the personal injury attorney as he deals with accidents. You want to have somebody that's focused on these laws. Otherwise, you know, you could lose the, uh, the claim if it's not done right. All right? And then, estoppel. What did I tell you to remember regarding this, estoppel? Stop, exactly. 
Okay, hammer time. Now, the stopple. It says right here, stopple prevents a person or stops a person from claiming a, a right or interest that is inconsistent with a person's previous statements or acts. So, as a basis of involuntary alienation, the doctrine of uh, estoppel or the rules of estoppel can prevent an owner from reclaiming a property that was transferred under false pretenses. So, I sell to you, and then later on, hey, I corrected the issues, give me the property back. That deed was not valid. That's what I'm, what I'm claiming. No. No. If I sold it to you, it's your property. I'm the one that loses. The issue got corrected, I cannot get the property back. So an estoppel is when a transfer occurs, it stops me or seizes me, the seller, from getting rights to the property again. Okay? So um, the grantor, the seller, is fully aware that the defect makes no disclosure to the, to, um, to the grantee. The grantor later cures a defect and then claims to be the rightful owner of the property on the basis of effort of clearing uh, expense, I'm sorry, an effort and expense to clear the title. The estoppel, this allows the grantor's claim because of the prior conveyance action. So the grantee remains the legal owner and benefits from the clear title as well. Who wins? The grantee, the buyer. Okay? Because the transfer is the transfer. You cannot come back. That's it. You cannot say, give it back to me. No. And that's what estoppel mean, means. It stops stops the grantor from uh, usage or any benefit or claim to the property it stops i sold it to you it's yours there was issues with the title that's my problem not your problem okay i clear the issues that's still my problem not your problem okay Lisa's asking, did this ever happen to you and a client? Uh, you're still talking about the uh, um, the fence thing as an example, the adverse possession stuff. And Dre says, can someone put a claim on land? What do you mean? Everything we're talking about is property. So everything we say has nothing to do with whether it's a single family, if it's a four family, if it's a skyscraper or just land. Everything we're talking about is based on property. And property is, again, the surface, right? Anything below, anything above, and whatever's on it. So can I put a claim on land? Yeah. I just keep moving that fence over, remember? That's it. Lisa, never say it's okay. Just tell me what it is. I'll answer like I asked if it was regarding the adverse possession. She goes, oh, that's okay. Never do that. Let's address it. We're good, guys? Indiana, you're good? Zoomers, thumbs up. We're answering the final uh, part of this, which is title records. Okay. Title records. So what are title records? It's not what's recorded on title. Title records is what shows who owns the property, right? And who's the rightful owner of the property. Now this comes what we call chain of title. What is a chain? Uh, first of all, what is a chain? Forget real estate. What is a chain? I, I, I see. Okay. I, I don't know what you guys are doing there. But okay. <laughs> is, is this sign language? A chain is that? Something connected. Oh, something connected? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with it. So yes, it's what connects or links one owner to another. It's what connects or links one owner 
to another. Perfect. Links. And Lisa answered links. Perfect. So chain. If there's a missing link, let's talk about a chain. Oh, I don't have a chain anymore. Uh, after the surgery, I took it off. But anyway, uh, before the surgery. But if I had a chain, let's say around my neck, right? And there's a link missing or it breaks. Would it stay on the neck or would it fall? It would fall, right? So if there's a missing link or if there's a gap, then we no longer have a chain. Something is missing and needs to be corrected, right? So let's go over this real quick. Andrea M says, it's like a wedding ring. Oh, so the ring is what keeps you together? That's what, that's what it is? It's the ring. It's not what you signed. It's not what you pledged. It's put a ring on it. Got it. Mm -hmm. I understand. If you were not hooked before, you are now. Put this ring. I do. <laughs> that's what it is. Got it. <laughs> All right, so uh, state laws, every state is different, but uh, state laws require the recording of all documents that affect rights and interest in real estate in the public uh, real estate records of the county where the property is located. So property records usually are at county level, county level. You don't have property records in the city. It's in the county records, okay? Now, these public records or title records contain the history of every parcel of real estate in the county, including names of previous owners, liens, easements, and other encumbrances that have been recorded. Hey, Valerie, how are you? So, title records show everything that's been placed against the property. And this is where we get to find out through constructive notice, right? We get to find out who has a claim to the property or not. Now, deeds, mortgages, liens, easements, and sales contracts are among the documents that must be recorded, as well as, um, I'm sorry, among the, that, that must be recorded. Documents that are not recorded. against the property, marriage, probate, tax records. These are not recorded, okay? So if you wanna search tax records, now you go to City Hall and look at the tax records. You wanna know about marriage or probate, now you gotta to go to vital records, okay? So these are totally separate than land, all right? Now, the general, uh, generally a county recorder uh, office or similarly named offices maintains the title records and title records serve a number of purposes, uh, not the least of which is to avoid ownership dispute, obviously. We have property records to avoid ownership disputes. Now, other important purposes. Why do we put stuff on... Uh, uh, public records to give public notice we got this notice is disclosure right heads up it's a warning we're letting the world know so public notice for buyer protection so the buyer knows that they have what's called a marketable title for buyer protection see you're telling me that you're selling something to me that you're not even the owner of right or you're telling you selling me something but you have a mortgage. So I need to have records that you paid off your mortgage before I buy the property. I want this cleared off the record. Does that make sense? So it's for buyer protection. Um, all the others are in chain or abstract. So depending on the title, uh, Lisa's asking if all the other stuff like, uh, sorry, uh, marriage probate taxes and so on, if they are on uh, the abstract or, or when we pull the, the, the title records. So depending on the type of title you're putting, you, you're pulling, you will come with more information. So if you're a married person or not, what are the text records on, on, on the property or not? Yes, so there might be more information, but that depends on what you pay for. 
And the last protection is for lien holder. Who's the lien holder? Who holds a lien against your property? Mortgage company, for instance. They want to make sure that the property is not sold without satisfying them first, right? So if the property is $500,000 in debt and you sell it for six fifty, dollars they want to make sure they get their cut. So lien holder protection, okay? Now, chain of title, we talked about the links. And the chain of title refers to the succession of property owners of record dating back to the, um, the original grant of title from the state to a private party. If there's a missing link in the chronology of owners, or if there's a defective conveyance, the chain is said to be broken, resulting in a clouded title. You guys remember what, what a cloud is on the title? What is it called? Cloud of title is what? It's a limitation, but what's the, the, the words that we use all the time? Encumbrance. Very good. So there's a cloud of title, there's an encumbrance. Perfect. To remove the clouds, the owner may need to initiate a suit to quiet title. Okay? We call a suit to quiet title because the title is noisy, has issues, it needs to be resolved. So it's a suit to quiet or clear the clouds on the title. Okay? Now, since you're asking about the abstract, Lisa, we're going to talk about abstract right now. Now, uh, for state exam purposes, I want you guys to focus on one thing. The word abstract. It might, the word might come in different ways. One of the words that might show up is summary or brief history. That's why the way I have it highlighted here abstract is a summary okay or brief history of records okay against the property so the reason why i want you to focus on this is because sometimes the question will be uh um which document or how can we get a brief history of all uh, public records that affect the property well we get an abstract of title okay which one of these is a summary of all the records uh, in public records against the property again abstract of title so get used to this abstract look for the word summary or brief history you see brief history look for a summary or abstract okay, remember that for uh, the exam Okay. So it's a condensed history. It's not everything. I just want to know what happened in 1981, what happened in 1983, what happened in, right, in, in February of 1995, and, and so on. I want to know what were the major events against the property. I don't need to have everything. right? I just want the condensed history, and that's what an abstract of title is. Okay. okay. Once we have the abstract of title, we need to have um, a proper, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a title search, right? We need to have a title search, that's the abstract, and we need to have a conclusion on that title in order to pass the title from one person to the other. And there's different ways to get it, right? Now, one of the things we need to know is that federal has no uh, recording standards, federal does not demand anything, state is the one that each state uh, determines which recording standards to follow. For instance, some states use what's called the Torrance system or Torrance certificates. In New Jersey, we don't have a Torrance system or Torrance certificate. It's not used. Uh, we use uh, the other three, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but not the Torrance system. But what is the Torrance uh, recordation or, or recording system? The best way I can explain this is uh your title for the car right see in real estate for you to have a clear title you need to have a copy of the deeds and everything that was recorded against the property a car the title is the history of the car right uh, and that's what, you, what we used to transfer also so the torrent system in certain states is the same as, as uh, the, the title for the car. All the information about the car is written in the title. Who had it, 
who has it now? Uh, is there a lien against it? Is there no lien against it? So when you pull the, if you have the title to your car, right, the pink slip, it says lien holder on the title itself. And the other side of it, the flip side says, if you want to sell it, please sign here. And buyer, please sign here. So it's all in one document. That's what the Torrens is. The Torrens is the title in certain states. Okay. So everything is registered in the title itself. Okay, that's the Torrens system. It, the, the transfer is recorded in the title itself. Okay. Now, title evidence. Title evidence. Guys, I want everybody to participate. YouTubers, there's nine people watching, and you guys as well at home on Zoom. And Lidiana, I want you to do this too. I want you to write. I'm going to give you some, some time to write this. Um, in the um, in the chat and I'm gonna put the chat up on the screen there you go the chat up on the screen lady you cannot see it but uh, for you guys at home that's the chat right there I want you guys to write what document proves or evidences title which document do we use to evidence title which document do we use to evidence title let me know Nothing's coming through. Waiting. Keep on writing. You already have it. Sorry. Andrea says proof of insurance. Most of you say deeds. Right? There's a few people that still did not answer. Which document evidences title? Which document? You don't know? Right? Got eight people on YouTube. Somebody quit as soon as I asked the question. Uh, Eight people on YouTube, only four answered. Which document shows title or proves title? So according to what we have here, let's see, let's see, let's see. Wow. So registration <laughs> title and registration <laughs> i'm not a cop i'm not asking that <laughs> uh so we have deed 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 wow it makes sense right deeds 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 deed right as you guys were answering i was writing this the deed is not evidence of title Hey, Valerie, no problem. So I feel like I'm a, on Mori or something, right? It's not the father, right? <laughs> the deed is not the title or evidence of title. Okay. But that was a good try. I did mention a couple times already. I mentioned a couple times. The deed only evidences a transfer. That's all. The deed is not title or proof title at all. Remember, there's different types of deeds. And I can promise that I'm the seller. We started this chapter with that. Three people bought, completely unrelated, right? One of them figured it out by doing a title search that the owner or whoever was selling the property was not even the, the actual owner. So a transfer, a deed or a transfer is not proof of title at all, okay? So which document proves title? There's four different documents, okay? Now, these four documents are Torrent Certificate, which I already told you is like it's the title itself, right? Because everything is recorded there, the property and uh, the transfer and the title records. The title insurance policy. So I have Lisa answered 
uh, insurance, and I think somebody else did as well. Insurance, Andreas C. So Dre, yep, insurance, right? Attorney's opinion of title on the abstract. So the attorney will review the title abstract and say, yep, it looks to be good. Thumbs up, right? So an attorney's opinion, right, after reviewing. And a title certificate. These are the only four ways to evidence title. There's no clear way to do this. That's how we started this chapter. There's no clear way to do this. But the best ways to do it are in this order. Torrent certificate is actually the best way. Then title insurance, because it's a protection. There's insurance, right? Attorney's opinion, then title certificate, okay? Title insurance. This is where an insurance company reviews all the records and says, there's no apparent issues, so we will insure the title. If there's any defects that will happen uh, while you're the owner, um, let's say Sebastian, while you're the owner, if there's any issues, we cover it. We, the ABC Insurance, cover it. You got it? We reviewed, everything appears to be okay, and we're, it's so okay that we're willing to insure. Okay, so we did underwriting, like we do for car insurance, for health insurance, and so on. We've reviewed everything, right? And we are now guaranteeing that based on what we saw, yeah, we're willing to insure, okay? Lisa just wrote test question. Yep. Test question. Absolutely. The cool thing about test, this test question in the state exam is uh, there's only two potential questions for uh, evidence of title. One of the potential questions is which one of these is not used in New Jersey? And the answer is torrent certificate. But anyway, uh, there, <laughs> there are other, um, another question there or variable of the same question. All right, um, now an owner's policy may have a standard coverage or extended coverage. Standard coverage protects against title defects such as incompetent grantors. So the second question potentially will be somewhere around this. Incompetent grantors, uh, invalid deeds, fraudulent um, transaction documents, and defects in the chain of title. Okay, so a standard owner's policy will protect against scams let's put it like that All right that's why it's 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 as strong as the title certificate or uh second place to the title certificate but it just protects you of scams extended coverage protects against liabilities that may not be public records something that we cannot find including again fraud and the recorded ownership claims somebody later on showing up and say hey that's my property unintentional recording errors or unrecorded liens so if the bank says, wait a minute, we never recorded the mortgage. And now it's the property's already with somebody else. What are we gonna do? Oh, record it anyway, right? The title company will, will, will now insure it. They will fight for you. They'll activate their own attorneys and fight for you to say, well, we pulled the record. You guys did not record anything. So give us your best shot, right? And they go to court and they fight okay so it's a protection for the homeowner everybody should have title uh, insurance whether the property is paid off or not you should have title insurance now extended coverage may also may also protect you against adverse possessors boundary disputes like the fence okay because a survey is uh, attached to the title insurance uh, and prescriptive easements Neither standard nor extended coverage insures against defects expressly excluded by the policy or defects that the owner might have been aware. So if you knew about it, and if the insurance company can prove that you knew about it, they don't protect you from that issue. Okay? It's pretty much you're looking at it, watching somebody rob your house, right? They broke, entered into your house, take everything, and you're just watching, right? And then you make your insurance claim. Right? You call the cops after you emptied everything out, right? No. As soon as you see something happening, what do you do? You call the cops, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. So anything that you're aware of, but you do not disclose, right? They do not cover. All right, let me see here. Uh, Valerie wrote, file certificate, attorney's opinion title. 
Island Insurance and Torrent Certificate. All right, you're, you're talking about the um, evidence of title. Yep, absolutely. All right, before issuing, as it says here, before issuing a title insurance policy, the title company conducts a title search. So they pull that abstract that we talked about before, and they're going to check all the links. They're going to uncover defects that might be on title or unrecorded breaks in the chain of title. If the search fails to discover any uninsurable defects, the company issues a binder or a guarantee, right? Um, attorney's opinion of abstract. So this is what I told you. It's the attorney reviews the abstract search or the summary or the brief history and gives it a thumbs up. I reviewed it. It's my legal opinion that this is good title. Now, let me ask you something. If I tell you, um, in my opinion, tomorrow is going to snow, right? That's my opinion. Tomorrow is going to snow. And I'm just telling you guys, not, not as a, a, an instructor, as a friend or, or an acquaintance, I'm telling you, tomorrow is going to snow. You're probably like, eh, I don't believe it. And then it snows really hard. I mean, we are, I am in Jersey, so I know it might happen, right? But as we all know, it might not happen either. So now you prepare yourselves for the biggest snow in the world, right? And then there's nothing. Can you sue me for making that statement? Can you sue me? The answer is no, because I, I was just giving you my opinion. That's it. But here's a little different. When we're talking about legal opinion, professional opinion, right? If the attorney is wrong, if the attorney is wrong, Andrea M., I created an expectation, but you cannot... It's on you. It's due diligence on you. But if it's a legal opinion, if now I'm the attorney or I'm the realtor, I'm the surgeon or whatever it is, once it's a legal opinion, things change. Okay? This color right here is blue. But I can tell you that in my opinion, this is purple. Right? And you can say, no, it's cyan. And somebody else says, no, it's pink. Hey, that's just your opinion. That's your point of view. It doesn't hurt anyone. Okay? But a legal opinion hurts. That's why this is not one of the reliable uh, evidences of title. It's just an attorney's opinion. If it goes wrong, the only protection you have is to sue the attorney. Pretty much that's it. Okay? And the last one, title certificates. This is pretty much just a like the, the, it's like the quit clean deed. It's the worst type of protection that you can get because there's no protection, okay? This is just a, a certificate. It doesn't guarantee anything. There's no attorney's opinion. There's no, there's nothing. There's nothing attached to this, okay? So it's really bad. Lisa, how long is the limit on the insurance? Uh, title insurance, it, it's only paid at purchase, as an example, um, and it lasts for as long as you're the owner. So there's no time limitation uh, on the insurance. You pay once for the lifetime of your ownership. If you own it for three days, it lasted three days. You own it for 30 years, it lasted 30 years. Okay? Look at that. Why, why are you celebrating, Sebastian? We're going to do chapter 7, 8, and 9 still today. No? All right, guys. Do you have any questions? Any questions that you'd like to, to address now? we still got 53 minutes and 50 seconds. Questions? Sebastian says that's fine, but chapter six is just a tedious chapter. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, but because of the, the questions that come in the state exam and the fact that you need to know also in real life certain, certain things, that's why I go slow with certain chapters. This, this is definitely one of them. All right, Marias asks, uh, Torrens is not used in New Jersey. Nope, Jersey we don't. We'll get to the Jersey portion, by the way, um, or the state portion, depending on which state you take in the, um, this class. The state portion is at the end. So we'll have the final two weeks pretty much is um, state only. 
Lisa, title insurance, is it required? Nothing is required here. You don't have to have title insurance. You don't have to get an abstract. You don't have to get the torrent. Nothing is required. Should you? The answer is yes. Now, if there's a mortgage involved, the mortgage company will require because they want to protect themselves. And the, the title insurance that they'll get is the mortgage title insurance. So it protects them. It doesn't protect you. You should still get an owner's title policy. Okay. Brenda says this is going slow. It finished early. What do you mean it's going slow? Um, Valerie, why is Torrens not used in New Jersey? Uh, it's it's not used in a lot of states. It's I, I don't know why we don't use it. It's just not used in a lot of states. That's all I can tell. New Jersey is one of them. Uh, you could lose your ho your house. Yes, without um, without insurance. Or, or protection somebody could come and claim the property um, and you, you just lose it yeah absolutely great can you explain a deed like I'm a five years old can I explain a deed like no I said right I know it's not Andrea it was dr. Dre over there uh, so <laughs> like I'm a five-year-old what is a deed okay have you been to the supermarket Ever? Okay. What do they give you when they purchase something? Receipt. Correct. That's the deed for houses. That's the receipt. So a, a, a deed just documents that it was once the supermarket property and is now your property. That's all. Does it guarantee that, that the supermarket owned the stuff that they were selling to you? No. I can put stuff on the shelf and it doesn't mean I, I, I purchased the legitimately. Right? Some supermarkets, I wonder how they got their stuff. Anyway. So, uh, you get a receipt. And yes, Sebastian, you're correct. It's called a bill of sale because it's personal property. Personal property is bill of sale. The deed is for real estate only. So, it's like the receipt that shows seller, buyer, Here's the, the property that you bought, and here's the money that you paid. Was that good enough for a five-year-old? Yeah? Okay, great. So it doesn't prove anything. Yes? Yeah. When, okay, so only the seller signs. When you go buy at the supermarket, the receipt on top or at the bottom has the name of the supermarket and their phone number. Does it have yours? Generally, no. Same thing, only the seller signs. Only the seller's info is, is the strongest one. You just have to be somewhat identified on the deed as the buyer, that's, that's the only thing. Well, it, it customer signature, if you pay in cash, there's no signature. <laughs> Valerie wrote, um, wow, that was the easiest explanation ever. It worked right now. First time explained this way, by the way. <laughs> uh, Valerie wrote also, bill of sales are used in shipping. So yes, bill of sale or receipt, it's used for personal property. Anything that's movable, it's a bill of sale. Deed is used to evidence the transfer in real estate. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Uh, Andrea M. Say that again. That again. Anything else you want me to say? Oh, deeds. Okay. What I said was bill of sale is for personal property, transfer of personal property. Deed is for transfer of real estate. That's all. All right, you guys are getting too anxious. Okay, there's time for 10 more questions. <laughs> Everybody's like, can we go? You're already home, I'm not. I'm the one that's anxious to go, just saying. Any other questions, let me know. Do you need a deed to sell a property? Pipping, yes. You need to have something that evidences the transfer. That would be the deed. 
Real property, though. Mm -hmm. Lisa, can you go over constructive and actual? Uh, the only difference, Lisa, between constructive and actual notice is whether you know about it or it's available to, to be searched, for instance. Uh, what I usually tell people, is, the example I was giving you right here as far as the book, is you know there's a chapter 7, but we didn't go over chapter 7 yet. So the information is available. You can read it before I read it to you, and you'll have actual notice. Or you can wait until we read it together, and at that point you have actual notice. That's it. So constructive, it's available. Actual notice, you already know about it. You know the details. That's all. So when you, do, when you pull a title, you know who the owner is. You know which property it is. You know if there's liens or no liens. That's actual notice. If you did not pull the title, the information was there. Constructive. Uh, Sebastian, can someone go out there, out of their way to get a torrent certificate as a just in case, or is, it's not used in Jersey? Nope. It's not, it's not recorded in Jersey. It's not used in Jersey. Uh, so no, you won't get it. Okay, so hold on. Um, there's no way for you to jump to the title without the deed. Okay. It's just the deed is the receipt. All right. So I can sell the property to you. I sell the property to you. If we never have a deed or record in any way, then do you own the property? No. You're, you're not understanding. A title does not exist without a deed. The deed is not the title, but a title does not exist without the deed. So if your name does not show up on, on the deed, you are not on title. The deed, okay, so title is everything. It's the deed, it's the liens, it's the tax records, everything becomes part of your title. The deed is just one tool. But title cannot pass from one person to the other without the deed. So if that did not happen, you're not the owner. You don't exist. It's, it's like those three people. Okay, two people purchased, they're not on title. So you, you would have to have possession of the property to try to make a claim. That's why we want to have the deed always. You want to have that receipt that says, yeah, I purchased it. Fine. Okay? The security guard could not stop you at the, the supermarket door if you have the, the receipt or the bill of sale. It's the same thing. If you don't have it because you threw it away before you got to the door, you have to return all the items. That's it. Or credit card to prove it. Uh, all right, let's see. Valerie has a bunch of questions after Zoom. Okay. You're, okay, one month for the state exam. There you go. Titles also after you're fully paid, okay. <laughs> Valerie just said, letter D comes before letter T in the alphabet. So deed cannot exist, I mean title cannot exist without the deed. So first thing is the deed, then it will be part of the title. There you go. No, it's a, it's a combination of things, yes. What is it? Explain what title is like you're five years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it, it's what I was saying. If there's a mortgage, that's part of title. Title is just the history of the property. So now you are the current owner of the property. What do you have on the title? You have the deed, you have the mortgage, you have tax liens, water liens, whatever liens you might have. So title is a composition of all the documents or instruments against the property. That's title. Deed is just the transfer of receipt. Mortgage is the lien they put against it. And then anything else that might, that might be there. All right? 
Okay. So uh, let's go back to the supermarket. What do you have in the bag? What did you purchase? Right? A bunch of stuff that goes in the bag, right? The, the bill of sale is the receipt for it. Okay. What's in the bag is everything that you purchased. So everything that's attached with it and, and, and so on. Okay. Title is everything, uh, Dre. Yes. But when the deed is transferred, does everything now go to the one who has the deed? That depends on how it was sold. It depends on how it was sold. So if I bought your property, let's say I buy Marlon's property. Marlon, I'm going to buy your house subject to the mortgage. That means I'm taking over the mortgage. Okay. In this instance, in this instance, I become the new owner with his mortgage. I'm paying his mortgage. I'm the new owner of records, so deed, but I'm using an old mortgage and I just keep on paying. So I take over, right? Most of the times, 99% of the times, this does not happen. 99% of the times, we need to know it's on title, so it's cleared or paid off before I take over, right? So uh, at closing, usually what Marlon would have to do is pay off his mortgage at closing for me to now put my new mortgage with a new bank. So that's why we need to know what's on title, what's records uh, recorded against the property so we don't have any surprises later on. Because imagine he does not, Marlon does not pay off his mortgage. Now I buy the property, okay? I'm the new owner. I have the deed that says I'm the owner. He did not pay off his mortgage and he's not paying the bill. What do you think his mortgage company or the lender, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna foreclose on the property. What is my defense? Marlon's no longer the owner? No, the lien stays with the property. So the mortgage is against the property. That's why we need to have a title search to see what's on the record, title record. So I can demand that Marlon pays off his mortgage before I buy it. Okay? Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you go to auction, you're screwed on title. You should do a title search, uh, but, but you're screwed. Because uh, one, you don't get to see the property inside. And two, title is as is as well. They're not guaranteeing anything. In fact, you don't get title insurance at auction. You might be able to get it after, but not at the time you purchase in the auction. So nothing is guaranteed there. When you buy from me, there's a guarantee because they're going to insure this transfer. When you buy at the sheriff, they don't guarantee or insure the transfer. The sheriff says, no, hey, I'm just doing my job. You should have done yours. You got it? Which is search. Yep. All right. Uh, Dre says it clicked now. It makes sense. Great. Uh, Brenda, deed is transferring and title is proof of ownership. Yes. Because it's a combination of things. Uh, Valerie. Title uh, is what your... Uh, title represents you. So the title represents everything about the house. I just mentioned that. Lisa says this section is 8% of the state exam. That's why I'm taking my time in it. Uh, Valerie goes, if you are a duke or a lord, that is your title. Things come with that title. There you go. <laughs> um, okay, put less down on the house. Have one week to pay the house in full though, right? Oh, you're talking about the auction? Uh, every state is different. Uh, in the state of New Jersey, yes, you have 10 days, not one week. You have 10 days at auction. You, you put a 20% down payment. And then you have 10 days to come up with the 80%. But again, every state is different. Every county is actually different. They might allow you to extend a little bit longer. All right? Okay, cool. I think got it. You guys got it? We're good? Any other questions you guys have? We've got 38 minutes. All right, going once. Going twice. Can I ask one about the last chapter? It's game. You can go all the way to chapter one.
this is the time to ask questions. When we have this, um, like we, we finished earlier, you guys can ask questions. Question is co-op versus timeshare, okay? Um, so I shared with you guys also the difference between condo and co-op. I don't know if, if all of you got the, the PDF, but um, a timeshare, is you simply you could you could be a, a co-op a condominium as well. The condo and co-op just determine the 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 ownership of the building, and you're leasing um, one of the units, right? In the in the co-op, usually usually in the co-op, you're leasing the unit without any termination date. So you're a renter, but without termination date, you're there forever, and you don't pay a rent. You pay monthly dues. Okay. A timeshare, you can own it or lease it, but usually what you're owning or leasing is one week out of the, the whole year. That's it. So a co-op is uh, you buy shares or stock into a corporation and you get to rent the space in that building for a very long time. Okay. So it's totally different than a timeshare. Timeshare by itself is you're getting that one week. Okay. Are you good with that? Okay. Uh, Brenda, do you need a special license to sell a timeshare? Hmm. That might be a state question as well. And the answer is no. There's no special license for anything. There's designations, there's training, there's uh, specialization in, in certain things. You don't need a special license to sell commercial buildings or industrial buildings. But it's recommended that you take a, a proper training, right? when it comes to that the only license you guys need the only license you guys need is a salesperson license and then after a few years if you want you can become a broker but the only license you guys need to deal with real estate is the salesperson license timeshares are no different there's no special license for timeshares timeshare is a bad business depends it's a lot of money for the one that's selling it's bad for the one that's buying. Um, what is marketable versus insurable uh, title? Well, actually, marketable title is one that's clear of any issues. So we had it somewhere here. Hold on, let me show you. Right at the beginning. Sorry, just one second. Nation. All right. Anyway, I know it's here in the beginning, but marketable title is clear of any issue. So you're you're buying a house, you're fully aware of um, that there's no mortgage, that there's no easements, that there's no encroachments, that there's nothing against the property that you're buying. So you're 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 at ease with what you're getting. Think about it as the example I give usually is uh, milk. When you go to the supermarket to buy milk, right? As an example, one of the things that we look at is There's no expiration date, so that's not the thing you look at. No. Uh, milk has a sell-by date. does not have an expiration date. Uh, <laughs> big, big difference, because milk does not expire. It transforms. It's a big difference. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the idea of a tune marketable title is being able to market the milk as milk is until that date. Okay? Because then it transforms. You can use it for other things. You can use it for yogurt, for cheese, and all that stuff, right? The worse it gets the milk, the better it is for the other things. Um, so just know that that's what you consume after. It's rotten milk. But anyway, uh, so that's a marketable. You're saying that it's milk, then it has to be able to be marketed as milk. After that date, can you say it's milk? 
No, because now there's other things happening to it and you don't drink it anymore. You got it? So marketable is free of any issues. You told me it's a house. The house is, is in, in good standing. The title is in good standing. It's a marketable property as whatever it is, a two family, three family, four family. That's marketable. Um, insurable title. Well, clear of the defects that we just read that that is clear or that the, the company is willing to insure. So we just talked about being insurable. Um, I did a title search, the abstract search, and there's no apparent issues, right? We, that's what we said right here. There's no apparent issues. So I'll insure it. If one of these happens, something that we did not see, right? Then uh, the title is already insured. So marketable is I'm selling this mouse as a mouse and it has no issues. It works perfectly. Okay, it works perfectly. Insurable, well, I looked at it. I examined it. It looks perfect. It clicks. It's good. I'm going to insure it. Simple. Okay. Now, if I tell you, look, I'm selling this to you. Uh, there's no issues, but then this little thing does not work. Uh, the, the wheel does not work, right? Then I did not disclose an encumbrance. I did not disclose an issue with the property. You guys understand? So if I did not disclose, uh, the insurance might insure, it might not. If they do insure and this happens to be an issue later on, then uh, the insurance company usually covers, right? Because it was not disclosed. And you as a buyer did not know about. Okay. Lisa, let me know if that was good. Uh, Janice, you should have the PDF. If not, let me know. Dre, okay, you got it. Superior liens and junior liens, you got it. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Cholvi, you're funny. <laughs> we Ping just asked, is mechanic lien superior to the mortgage lien? All right. Mechanics lien and mortgage liens are junior liens. Okay, so what's superior liens? Superior liens are taxes. Real estate taxes, we talked about it, right? Or municipal um, uh, issues that they might have, like water and so on. Under the junior liens, they will have priority based on dates that they were recording, recorded. So if I record something in 1991 and then you record something in 1995, I have priority because I was there first. So first in time, first in line. Mechanics liens... The thing about mechanics, they, they don't have priority or they're superior with mortgages. It's just that mechanics liens, they, they're retroactive to when the work was done. Okay? They're retroactive to when I, I completed the work or I delivered material. That's the only thing. So if I recorded something in 91 and then somebody did work on the property in 92 and I never paid them and then later on you record something in 95, when the judgment comes on the mechanic uh, uh, or construction lawsuit, right? When the judgment comes, the construction lawsuit will have priority against you, not me. I'm still first because I was in 91. 92 was the work done. Then you came in in 95 and the judgment in 96 on the construction. The construction lien goes back to when it was done in 92. So priority will be 91. Work done in 92, even though it's not a lien yet. And then uh, second mortgage in 95. So it doesn't have priority. It's just retroactive. Okay. Uh, Lisa, absolutely. All right. Next question. This feels like the uh, bidding on, on eBay. I don't know if you guys ever bid on eBay. The timer is almost done, right? And you think, oh, I won, I won. This is over. I won, I won. And all of a sudden, somebody clicks with another, a new bid. <laughs> Always. 
Lisa says, thank you for your patience. I took my class and need to take the state exam. Now I'm nervous. Well, if you pass the, the class exam, you shouldn't be nervous. That's it. Ready to go. <laughs> All right. But keep on reviewing and ask any questions you might have. All right. With that being said, I don't see any other questions coming through. Going once. Going twice. Twice and a half. And twice and three quarters. Sold. <laughs> 3,500, says Ron. All right, guys. Um, enjoy the remainder of the 30 minutes uh, that this class has and then the rest of your night. And I'll see you guys um, Monday. We don't have class uh, Thursday or Friday. We're back here on Monday at 5.30. So enjoy the rest of your week. If you have questions, make sure you study. Use the resources. If you have questions, uh, WhatsApp. The questions in the group. Somebody will help you. Other students or uh, send me messages directly, but try the WhatsApp group first, all right? Thank you guys, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.